Hey, this is Vaughn Vernon. Welcome to my Design Accelerator tutorials. It's brought to you by my company Kalele, and you can find us on the web at kalele.io. And you can look into our workshops, including my most popular workshop, the IDDD workshop, or Implementing Domain Driven Design workshop. Today I'm going to be talking about why I hate the outbox pattern and as a subtitle, why you should hate it too. So I welcome you to join me and look forward to working together today. Admittedly, the outbox pattern does solve a set of problems. However, I'm going to challenge it and say that it also potentially causes problems or absolutely does cause problems. So let's dig into this topic. Let's first consider the problem. We have three different users. Each user is submitting a REST request and it's a different REST request. Request A, request B, and request C. It's submitting it to a bounded context. And within the bounded context, there are ports and adapters, so we're using the ports and adapters architecture. If you haven't yet seen my tutorials on the ports and adapters architecture, I'll provide a link to that in the description of this video. But they submit to a bounded context. An adapter or a set of adapters picks up those requests and then dispatches them to the inside of the application, including the domain model. Each of the three commands being submitted through REST requests are executed against three different entities, entity A, entity B, and entity C. And each of these entities respectively creates a domain event. As each domain event is created, it is published to a messaging topic or exchange, and those events are thus made available to any consumers who are interested in them. Now you're probably thinking, okay, so where's the problem? Well, notice that each of the events is sent directly to a messaging mechanism. However, each of the entities that are either created or modified are persisted to the database transactionally. Each of these dashed boxes represents a separate transaction. So as you can see, there are three separate transactions and each of the entity types and instances are persisted to the database safely. Did you detect the problem? What if each of these entity instances is persisted to the database and remains in the database, but the events are not published or any one of the events are not published to the messaging mechanism? Why could that be? It could be that the messaging mechanism fails or there is some failure of the client trying to send those through the messaging mechanism. There are a number of different reasons for it. Or on the other hand, what if the events are properly sent through the messaging mechanism, but any one of the related entities is not persisted to the database. In other words, you can very easily have out of sync data and information persisted and information published to consumers that becomes inaccurate. The outbox pattern solution says to persist the entities and the domain events together in the same transactions. That way the entities and their corresponding events are persisted to the database correspondingly if there are any failures, rollbacks, then the entity and the domain event are together rolled back. So any failure will prevent both either from being persisted or from being published out of sync with a failure in persistence in some way or another. So you'll see that the entities are now persisted and we have some kind of a journal in the database. For example, an individual table that events are persisted to in the order in which they have occurred. After this, the events can then be safely published through a messaging mechanism. Hate? What's there to hate about the outbox pattern? It seems to work great. Well, it's not actually the concept of the outbox pattern that's the problem. It's the general way in which it is codified and generally implemented. Let me explain. 
So let's look at the general implementation that's used, even the way that the pattern is described or codified. You'll have a table in the database, let's call it table outbox, and each of the events is persisted, inserted into this table, and each of the rows in this table will have a unique identity. Let's call it an auto increment or a sequence, and it can start from one or whatever number you choose. Um, actually, let's say that we started at one and this is now identity 100 through 106. The problem with the outbox is seen when we consider what an outbox actually is. Think of an email outbox. When you send an email through your email client, it goes to the outbox as it is actually sent out of your client machine and to the network, to an email server, that email is deleted from the outbox. It may be copied or moved to a sent folder. The point is, it is no longer in the outbox. As you can see here, we're using the same approach as each of the events is sent to the messaging mechanism, it is deleted from the outbox table. And the events that have not yet been sent remain in the table. This means that events are generally ephemeral. They are not meant to be saved or persisted for a long time. And that's the general problem. Events are valuable. They should not be ephemeral for the most part, if, especially if we're talking about domain events, events that are persisted, events that are created in the domain model for the purpose of communicating domain happenings, facts about things that have happened in the domain model. So you may say, when I delete them from the outbox table, I'll first insert them into a table sent and they'll be there for reuse later. Okay, possible. But understand something. Whenever you are updating the database in any way, any single table within a transaction, you are going to take time to do that. It's a slow operation. Therefore, you have to think about the clock. Now, it could well be that you don't need to really be too concerned about performance. Perhaps you have a low throughput, high quality uh, kind of application or system that you're building. And so it could be that this outbox pattern works okay. But then think about this. What happens once you have the event in a sent table? What are we actually trying to accomplish here? What is the, the point of this? And understand too that even just moving or persisting the event to a different table before deleting it within a transaction requires even more time. So think about the clock in this case, but let's consider what are we actually trying to accomplish in this case by kind of working through all of this. Uh, before we get into the reason or purpose that we're going through all these mental and database gymnastics to use the outbox pattern, and with any attempt at all to try to preserve the domain events long term, I forgot about one option that can be used for the outbox pattern. You could have a sent column. Every event that has been successfully sent through the messaging mechanism could have the table updated in the sent column, marking it true or somehow that it has been sent, and the events that have not been sent yet would have a false uh, default value in them. Now, think about this though for a second. Again, this is a bit of mental gymnastics. If the attempt here is simply to try to preserve the domain events, what happens then? We literally only have one opportunity to send. You might say, all I have to do is mark all the columns false again, and I could just publish them again using a different thread, for example. Is that really the case though? What would happen if you marked all the columns to false and way down here, the other thread that's sending events through the messaging mechanism is still operating on the next set of events to send them. It's going to actually end up rereading, requerying all of the events that have now been marked false and it's going to publish them again. That's not very conducive to a good design. So again, let's talk next about what the purpose of all this database gymnastics is and what are we actually trying to accomplish by using these various techniques to try to work with the outbox pattern. I think the point of this is that we are trying to support subscriptions. So think about this as instead of outbox hate, 
subscription love. First of all, consider that with a subscription kind of pattern, we're going to need a different table name because the purpose of the table is different. In this case, it could be table journal. I like the name journal because it doesn't just serve the purpose of some kind of an outbox, but on the other hand, it even goes beyond events. You could name this table events or event store or something like that, but that's really not fully the purpose of this table. A journal can handle other kinds of persistence. For example, what if you wanted to persist commands in this table rather than just events? And you wanted the commands to interleave with the events according to the time in which they occurred. This could be an important addition. But now, how would we support a subscription? Well, think about having another table called table subscriptions. At a minimum, we would have two columns, a subscriber and an ID. Of course, you may have another column for the actual identity of the subscriber, but this ID, in this case, refers to the identity in the first column, basically the primary key of the table journal. We could rename this to position or location or something like that. But the point is we have some kind of a placeholder for where the subscriber has reached in the total ordering of IDs in this table journal. So for example, pricing subscriber has reached the point of 10,021 position or identity in this journal table. Reservations has reached 1,231. Reviews, 7,271. Scheduling, 551. Promotions, 25,017. Arrivals, 310. And departures, 91, 92. So you get the general idea. Of course, this table will have to be updated as subscribers reach certain points. There are various ways to do this if the throughput is higher, where you actually have high throughput, perhaps lower value transactions rather than low throughput high value transactions, for example, which is typical for an industry such as insurance. On the other hand, if you're doing e-commerce or other kinds of applications that have high volume, lower value sales, you're going to need a higher level of throughput. And so the updates could hurt you. So I think you get the flavor of this. We are actually supporting independent subscriptions that have to have unique names, and that way we can satisfy moving through this journal table at different paces for different kinds of subscribers. Next, I'll show you how subscriptions can be managed. First of all, new subscription positions should be initialized to zero, as you can see here for arrivals and departures. Second, you can obtain the most recently persisted events, those that have been persisted since the previous query or existing events of a subscription by selecting the ID and event from the table journal where ID is greater than position. Of course, it could be costly to continuously query table subscriptions for the current position. So to avoid that, cache all subscription current positions. Fourth, only update the subscription position after sending all queried events to the messaging mechanism. If you were to update the subscription position prior to that and the messaging mechanism failed or there was some reason why the events weren't sent to the messaging mechanism, you would then fail to ever send those specific domain events. The fifth point highlights what happens if, for example, you fail to update the position in the table subscriptions. Well, it basically means that some events would be resent. Imagine that you do send the events through the messaging mechanism, but before you can update the arrivals row, for example, to the current position that has been sent, there would be some kind of failure to do so. In that case, the events that had already been sent will be resent along with any others that have not yet been sent. In that case, for those events that would be resent and therefore re-delivered, consumer receivers must be item potent. 
An idempotent receiver is one that, no matter how many times an event or other kind of stimulus is delivered in repetition, for example, event one, event two, event one again, and then event three, only event one, two, and three will occur one time on the other side of the listener. Of course, this is only one way to implement an idempotent receiver. You'll probably want to take a look at my reactive DVD modeling uncertainty video on YouTube, and that will help you to understand another way to do that by actually being idempotent in the domain model. Although I don't specifically discuss the outbox pattern in implementing domain-driven design or strategic monoliths and microservices, I do discuss most of the other points that I made today related to this topic. So I welcome you to check it out. If you've already read Implementing Domain-Driven Design, recommend it to your colleagues. And if you haven't yet read Strategic Monoliths and Microservices, I think you'll find it very eye-opening. So I welcome you to check those out and share them with your colleagues. And thanks for joining me today. I hope you tune in next time. Take care.